Hello, welcome to Max 7 tutorial number 11, Matrix Control, a la Boom Chicka Chicka. All right, so we learned the big secret. We learned how to steal from help files. We've learned many things in the last tutorial. And in that spirit, I'm just going to open a new patcher today, hitting Command N. And there's our new patcher. I'm going to make it as big as I can, just so we have a lot of room to work today. Um, I'm going to recreate our patcher uh, moving quickly just as we did before. So I'm going to make a new object and I'm going to put a counter in there and I'm just going to go ahead and um, option click on it, get the help file. Here's the counter that I liked over here. I'm going to unlock this patcher. That's command E or control E I believe on a PC. I'm going to grab all the stuff I want. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to close that patcher. I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to paste this in here. Look at that. We are moving right along today. Speedy. OK, there's our counter. And now, what was the other thing we wanted before? We needed a metronome. Sorry that I put this way up too high. We need a metronome to run our counter. So I'm going to put the counter down here. And you know, we know our matrix. Oh, sure, I'll go get a new one. Here we go. Um, N, just push N, type in metro, go ahead and hit the um, option click on that. We get the help file. And here we have a metronome that's all ready to go with a starter and a blinker and a number to set the time in milliseconds. Let's unlock it, take the stuff we want. Command copy or control copy if you're on a PC. I'm going to close that window, delete that metronome, put in the new one, hook them together, and um, oh, sure, that box is nice. Let's stick some messages in here today just so we can run it at some different speeds. So we'll type the letter M and type uh, what's pretty fast. Uh, uh, six beats per second would be pretty fast. That's about 16 seconds. So, uh, so uh, that would be 160 milliseconds. That's crazy. 175. Let's say 175 milliseconds. Uh, another message, 250 milliseconds. And another one, 333. That seems like a nice number as well. and 500 for half a second. Okay, great. We'll just move this out of the way. And just, I'm gonna go over the little tricks until you get tired of hearing me do it. If you click on, on um, an inlet or an outlet and you get your nice patch cord going there, if you hover, if, if you hover over this where it's gonna go, you see them all light up, hold the shift key down and then you can go click click, click, and I'm about to do the last one, so I'm going to let up off the shift key and click. And now we have a metronome if we lock our patcher that runs at different speeds and etc. So there it is, running, 175, running much, much faster, 250, that's four times a second, 333, about three times a second, and 500 twice a second. Fantastic. And our counter is counting up to four. Uh, let's change that just for the sake of argument to 16, because we're going to do something musical today. Of course, we could put messages for that too, but I'm just going to try to stay consistent here. So, we have our metronome running, we've got our counter running, and now what we would like to learn about today is the matrix control object. So go ahead and, actually I'm going to try to get this a little bigger for you here so that you can see more closely what I'm doing. And in the same spirit, we're going to um, steal the parts for this too. So go ahead and type in N type matrix, and you'll see the control 
oops, I didn't type, I spelled it wrong. There we go. Matrix CTRL, that's matrix control. Go ahead and click on that when you get it. And that's what it looks like. Uh, really a lot like a preset object. And in some ways it's like a preset object. But let's not even bother talking about it. Let's option click on it and get the help file. And now we can see it with all its various messages coming in. And I'm going to take them all. But before I do, I'm going to show you sort of a teaser of things to come. If you've noticed the top tabs up here, this gives you more information about matrix, uh, matrix controls. So and this is how to change the colors. This is a whole other mode that it operates on, which is pretty nice. You can turn these up and they output a range of numbers instead of always putting out exact just a one or a zero. So that's nice, but that's not what we're into today. Today we're going to be basic. Let's just unlock this, steal every steal all the stuff in the middle. Come on, you slowpoke computer. Got it all. Command copy or control copy if you're on a PC. And let's get rid of that one and put in our new one. Um, this often happens. Uh, it puts it in the patcher where it was in the other patcher. But since they're still all selected, you can grab any one of these and as long as you don't let up off the mouse, you can drag all the things you just pasted over here. And that's kind of what we want it to look like. So what does a matrix control do? Well, it allows you to kind of go over here and um, enter a pattern of things that you want to happen. And in a normal set of uh, circumstances, they usually use this to control sort of input outputs, like if you were trying to route audio from one place to another. But we're going to hijack that a little bit today um, and do it differently. But before we do that, let's figure out what it is that this thing's doing. Over here we have a clear button. So if we go ahead and press the clear button, we have nothing. So the clear button is nice. Let's keep the clear button. Um, we have 111. Let's push it and see what happens. Okay. This is column, uh, column 0 here and this is column 1, and this is column 2, and this is column 3, etc, etc. So because it always counts column 0, you have to get used to this sort of digital talk. So column 0, and then this is number 0, number 1, number 2, and number 3. So essentially this is column 1, even though I know it's column 2, and it's row, one, even though I know it's row two, okay, and it's on, which is a one. So it's telling you column, row, value. So now you know how to enter in anything you want. To turn that off, if you wanted to do it by way of message, you can hit 110. That's column one, row one, zero. And sure enough, the value turns off. And then if you want to be more elaborate, um, this is in, ro in rows of three, in sets of three here, zero, zero, one, so that'll be this first one, zero, zero, one, it'll turn it on. One, 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 that'll be this one, and it'll turn on column row, column one, row one, turn it on. Then one, two, two, that'll be, um, column one, row two, turn, uh, I don't know what to do with a two. Let's just hit it, see what happens. There we go. Zero, zero, one, 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 one. Oh, it's two, two, one, sorry. And three, three, one. So that's it. Zero, zero, one, two, two, one, three, three, one, zero, one. Oh my God. Zero, zero, one, 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 one. 221331. Three, Clear. Turn them off. Okay. Goodness me. So what are we going to do with this kooky thing today? Well, um, we're going to use this to make a sort of rudimentary rhythm machine. 
because what we can do is once you enter things like this, for example, then you can go along here and see which ones you've picked in a sort of sequential way. So if you see here it says uh, get row zero, and I'm just going to click it, and it says one, zero, 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 zero. So what it's telling you is all the way across here, only the first one is lit, and then this is zero, 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 zero. I'm going to clear again, and we'll uh, get uh, column one again. Whoops, I'm sorry, get, <laughs> get row zero again, and now it's zeros all the way across. Let's look at this one and say, oh, we can only get row zero. So let's look at something that has a, a um, something in row zero. This has something in row zero. Now we'll say get row zero and this row again is one zero 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 zero. Yes, I realize I did that before. Okay, well it's always good to do it twice. So how, one would wonder, could we selectively grab sets of these columns going across and then we could have it find one of these things that we turn on and output let's say a sound. Well, lucky for us we have this counter going here and we've already seen that we can get a column number one. So I want to tell you something about messages. When you have a get if you wanted to change this and make it get column two get column three like you're doing with the counter there's a way to do that and so what we'll do is unlock our patcher and move this thing over here so we can just keep looking at it and I'm gonna straighten this thing out by using command Y okay instead of column one I'm gonna edit it and call it string one that is the dollar sign and a one. Okay, so now whatever number comes out here, it's going to go in the top of this and it will be read as string one. So first it'll, um, you can see this will be changing here, except our counter is counting up to 16 and there's only eight columns here, but three, four, you can see it changing it should go in the first there should be a one in the first space then the second then the third then the fourth there it went did you see that wasn't that exciting maybe I can even zoom in and look at it oh, nope I can't oh there we go yeah so we get a little as the counter comes by with a one two three four it reads off through here and we get boom 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 or actually we don't I notice the first one never changes and do we know why that is we do it's because of the row zero problem our counter is counting from one and our matrix control is counting from zero so what we're gonna do is put an object in here called minus one so type an n type a hyphen also known as a minus sign a space and then a one and this is a new object for you now called minus one and so whatever comes in the top whatever number comes in there you subtract one from it and it comes out the bottom one less it goes into this message it becomes string one and then we are interrogating this and getting these numbers out now I'm going to just move this off to the side a little bit. This is for when you uh, puts out what you're clicking. I'm going to lock my patcher and show you that. So if I click on this, this should be um, column 0, row 3. And sure enough, column 0, row 3. Wait, I better stop the metronome. It'll screw everything up. And if I click here, it should be column 1, row 3. A value of 1. Yes, column 1, row 3, value of 1. I'm going to click here now, and what happens? 
column 0, row 3 has now turned off, so it's a 0. How could we do something useful with this, but we don't want to click on this? On this side, it comes out by itself when you say get column. So let's do the same thing we're doing here. Let's do it over here. Um, kind of find all this stuff to be useful, if useless at this point. So let's just delete it. I'm going to, except for the clear button, I'm going to leave the clear button there because that seems useful. Useful. Deleted. I'm going to move the clear button over here, up to the top. I'm kind of tired of these two. And get these out of the way. Start cleaning up around here. All right. So we've uh, pared it down, and uh, instead of having this thing here, we're going to stick it over here. So just unattach that if you can, or you can make a new patch cord either way. If you click on the patch cord and then uh, grab the gr little green ball, you can move it from one place to another. Now, there's four rows here, and we only have three um, spaces. So I'm going to edit this and put another space zero in there so that our un unpack is a little bit bigger and unpacks four things at a time. And I need to stretch it out a little bit here so you can see it. Okay. And um, I'm going to get rid of these labels too because they're going to get in my way. And I'm going to option click on this number and put another number over here. And so now Actually, we're going to do one itsy bitsy other thing. Okay, so if we turn the metronome on, and then I'll show you the itsy bitsy thing that we want to do. Now it's counting one, two, three, and we can see these going um, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, one, two, three, four. Yes, just like that. Um, now we're getting these numbers coming out of here every time it cycles around. And um, there, now we can get one each time through our count of 8, but through 16, we're not getting anything past that. That's just awesome. Look at it go. Okay, so how can we get 16 um, columns here? That's correct. I heard, I heard someone out there yell it. Go to the inspector and find the uh, number of columns. And if I can, I need to move this over a little bit so I can get some more space. And hopefully we can zoom. I know this always results in a spinning ball, but nonetheless, there it is. Number of columns. We can just go right over here and double click on this and enter 16 and then click over here again <laughs> and um, zoom back out if you're me the rest of anybody who's not me can just sit there and do nothing and now we'll stretch this out so that our circles are circular okay oh that's so much better all right so now we have this thing counting along and um, oops gotta lock it there we go and you know this is one of those um, situations where our old friend the preset would be handy actually there's a number of things that would be handy right now and the preset is one of them. So let's just type N, type in preset, get a preset, and go to its left outlet, connect it to the in left inlet of the matrix control, and um, make up a pattern you can recognize. I'm going to go like this.
and then I'm going to shift click on number one in the preset. There it is. Now, uh, another pattern. Let's just turn those into X's for pattern number two. Does everybody, or spell out some word that, you know, that you can spell out in a four by four grid. I don't even know if that's possible. Okay, so shift click on number two, and then we'll clear it and make a whole new pattern. Okay, shift click number three, uh, whole new pattern again. I like that one. Okay. And so now, if you go back to your uh, presets here, you can click on one, you can click on two, you can click on three, and you can click on four. Is that exciting or what? And our, um, we can see that as this thing goes one, two, three, four, it's boom, 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 boom. So in, it's telling us essentially which one of these is um, is the is the uh, is is activated, is light, is uh, clicked on. Let's call that the active state. All right. So far, so good. Um, we have this thing reading this, and we have. Um, a way to watch it work. You know, there is one really cool thing we could do here, and that is um, let's um, make a slider. Type the letter, oops, sorry, unlock your patcher. Type letter N, type slider, or you can go get a slider if you want, and then we'll grab the slider, stretch it out so that it, it's a little bit longer than your than your uh, thingamajig there that a little longer than your matrix and then click on it go over here make the knob color bright red <laughs> if you have a knob color and scroll down and make the range 10 uh, sorry uh, we have 16 spaces here so make the range 18 just so it's a little bigger okay and now we'll click back here and connect the bottom of this number to the top of your slider hmm I don't like it. Um, to get rid of, um, unlock your patcher again, and oops, sorry, unlock your patcher again, and let's go over here to and make it not an indicator but a indicator. Oh, that's indicator plus. We would just want it to be an indicator. There we go. Oh, that's so much better. So indicator plus is not the same as indicator. Now, um, when this thing's at one, or let's uh, let's see if you can, oops, click in here, lock your patcher, and let's just let's just do this manually. Shift, uh, click down here and enter a one in that number, and it'll send this thing to a one. Okay, and then we're gonna unlock the patcher click on this and size it so that that is right there. I actually have a better idea. You're going to like this. But this will still work. And then put a 16 in here. Whoops. Got to lock your patcher to do that. 16. And unlock it again. And size it so that 
you're right at the 16 mark. Okay, and now go up to the top and click on your formatting button, make, making sure that your slider is still activated, and get that background color and make it completely transparent. Awesome. And now click on your slider again, stretch it right, straight up through your matrix control and now there's one more important thing whoops and that is find the ignore click over here and click it because you want it to ignore it there it is all right back over here in your patcher lock your patcher down turn it on and let's look at it oh my goodness is that just cool as anything Right, well, let's not get carried away with that. Stop your metronome again. And now we're gonna learn about something completely different, which is how we can send music out. I'm gonna give you a very fast crash course in sending the music out because um, there's some complications, but this is, will essentially be MIDI. So um, on the bottom of each one of these, we're, we want to send out a number that corresponds to a MIDI number. I will go into more detail with that later, but let's just say, first we want a new object that selects the number one, and that object is called a select. So type in select, and then a space, and then a one. And what happens with this object is if it receives a one in its top left inlet, it sends out a bang right here. And when it does, this is going to send out the message, uh, we need a, a, a midi, middle of the road MIDI number. So I'm gonna type the letter M, I'm gonna type 40. Okay. And then I'm going to just, um, I do a lot of this, which is I select multiple objects, I option click on them, and I just drag them across, and then we'll connect all the left outlet to left inlet. Very good, very good, left outlet, left inlet. And then we'll come down here and we'll just edit all these numbers because we don't want them to be the same. So this one can be, uh, 70, I guess. Oops, not 770. This one can be 60. And this one can be 50. So every time we get a 1 here, it's going to send out a 40. And if I get a 1 here, it's going to send out a 50, a 60, and a 70. There's an object called um, make note. So we're going to type N, make note this is a MIDI making object M-A-K-E-N-O-T-E -E, there it is and then just trust me on this again I will um, go into more detail later let's type a velocity in of 100 and then we will uh, type a duration in of uh, well it's they're gonna be drum beats so it doesn't really matter but let's just say 250 and a channel and this is important it has to be channel 10 in this case and the reason is that um, that 10 is the percussion channel in the MIDI world so we want to make a beat machine here we want it to send out on channel 10 uh, notes 40, 50, 60, and 70. Each time a 40 goes in here, it's going to make note 40, the pitch of 40, for at a volume of 100 at uh, for 250 milliseconds. Okay, so now we can connect this to here. I'm going to hold my shift key down so I can do it fast. Boom, boom, boom. Let your shift key up. Don't do that last one. Okay, 
So now we're all set there, that's hooked up to there. Now we have to send it somewhere, and there is a special object to do that called note out, and so type n, note out. And you can just click outside that because um, Mr. Make Note is going to take care of all this for us. As you can see, this says um, pitch output, and this is pitch input, so good. They get connected in a straight line. This is velocity output. This is velocity input. This is channel output. This is channel input. And now, lock your patcher and double click on note out just to make sure of something. When I double click on it, I get all these options. And what I want is my AU DLS, this is audio units, uh, I can't remember what did DLS stands for, synth one. Audio units, synth one, that's what I want on a Mac. I don't know what the synthesizer is on a PC. Um, if it works, it works, and uh, if it doesn't, pick a different one. Okay, so let's start our uh, metronome now and see what we've done. Oh my goodness. Is that just the coolest? I'm gonna, just going to turn that up a little bit. So we've done it. We've made a drum machine with a fancy thing that, uh, and we can add to it too. Find something you like here. Maybe I don't like, that's a little too regular. Oh, the suspense. And the nice thing is, once you find something that you like here, you can I, I have to admit I don't like that, but hey, I had it saved, so there it was. And then number three, it's all a little slow for me. Let me just uh, speed it up. digging it. All right, fill those things up, and I will see you in the very next tutorial.